Hey everyone, my name is Lamar. Uh, I'm the host of the Healthcare Digital Marketing Podcast. I have Dr. Block here. We're super excited about this episode. He's going to share some, some really good insights about growing a practice, being an entrepreneur, and, and all the great things of dentistry. And so uh, before we jump into it, I would love Dr. Block just to, you know, in, introduce himself and give some background um, on his experiences. Oh, thanks for having me. Yeah, I'm a I'm a dentist outside of Boston, about 30 minutes west of Boston. I actually grew up here uh, in this area, and um, I practice in the same town that I live in, so it's an easy commute. Um, and I've been practicing almost almost 20 years. I'm a general dentist. I do a lot of implants, uh, but, but mainly general dentistry. It's a it's a family practice, so we see kids and um, the whole family. So. Um, that's, that's kind of my, my story. Thanks for having me. Yeah, that's awesome. Thank you for sharing that. And I think you and I met through a mutual connection. Uh, they, they connected us together. We, um, we were able to just share our, our experiences from, you know, your, your experiences with, with dentistry as well as mine, um, from a marketing standpoint. And, uh, so I'd love to just kind of open up to learn how, how'd you get into dentistry? Yeah, good question. So I've always been around it. You know, my dad's, He's a retired dentist, but growing up, I didn't really want to be a dentist. I went to Tulane and I was a business major and I sat there in microeconomics and macroeconomics with 500 kids in the class. And I said, nah, this isn't for me. Wow. So I started looking into the health professions, physical therapy, being a physician, uh, dentistry, and started taking all the prereq classes, which at, at the time at Tulane, there wasn't a pre-med or pre-dental. So I was doing it on the side. I ended up choosing psychology as a major. And then one night I was out at a bar, which a lot of college students tend to do. Right. And I was drinking a bottle of beer and I just missed and I hit my tooth and I fractured my front tooth. Wow. So my friends were scrambling around to get the piece of tooth and they were, you know, I think one of my friends even kept it in his wallet for like the whole semester just to mess with me. Uh, so I went to a local dentist in Metairie, Louisiana. This is, you know, I went to Tulane down in New Orleans. Right. And I just really loved the experience of how they took care of me and patched me up. And I walked in there all embarrassed with half a front tooth. I walked out of there with my smile again. And it started to make me think that maybe this is something I could do. So I started hanging around my dad's office. I took all the, the rest of the prerequisite classes, which I had to do an extra year. Okay. Uh, so that year I did kind of like a fifth year after Tulane. I took some extra classes like physics and organic chemistry. And I taught tennis as like a, that was my year. I taught tennis and took the prereq classes. Okay. And then I applied and got into Nova and I went to Nova Southeastern and, um, ended up coming back up here to Massachusetts to practice. So that's, that's my story. Wow. That's awesome. So, so you, you said you, you've been practicing for 20 years now? Almost 20 years. Yeah. Wow. That's, that's a lot of good history. And it's so funny with your story. Uh, I have a, a very similar story where, um, I, so I played basketball in college and my senior year, uh, the season's over with at this point and we're just playing pickup basketball and Andrew Lovedale, he, he was our center. He's like six, nine. And I don't know why, but I thought I could rebound with him. And I try to reach for the ball. And as he's coming down, he swings his elbow just to kind of protect me from stealing the ball. And he knocks one of my, one of my teeth out. And so literally, like, I swallow it at the same time. <laughs> like, simultaneously, it gets knocked out and I swallow it. And um, I got a dental implant. But before I got a dental implant, three years, I had to go with, like, a dental bridge or, or some kind of, you know, partial where – Confidence is, a, is, is key, especially with dental. And I, and I bet you can relate to this with the chip tooth. You guys do so much with, you know, helping people with their confidence. <laughs> and so for me, like, I struggled, you know, to, to speak in front of people, having a missing tooth. Um, I slurred my words. And it was just a confidence killer. So getting that implant eventually, I mean, it was, it was everything for me. So, you know, kudos to you guys for, for all that you do, and, and especially in the dental space. And, uh, um, you know, I appreciate, you know, just that that you sharing that story because you were on the other side of it and then it, it helped you, you know, go down the career path of dentistry. So that's awesome. 
And so, yours wasn't yours was an elbow. Mine was a beer bottle. It, <laughs> right, right, <laughs> exactly. So, so been, you've been practicing for a long time, and you got a lot of uh, good experience as a as a practice owner when it comes to stress and burnout. Like, what advice would you give, you know, a, a new dentist or, you know, a dentist that's been around for three or four years, just how to deal with that and, over, and to overcome it? Uh, that's such a good question because I really did suffer from burnout and anxiety. I, I started to become so nervous all the time and I just didn't enjoy going to work. I, I felt like the profession was suffocating me. And then when I left at the end of the day, I could finally breathe. I... And this this happened over years, and there was a lot of reasons why it happened. So I, I said to myself that I couldn't practice like this for the next 30 years. I had to do something. Yeah. Because I didn't enjoy going into work every day. I had, you know, the major Sunday night blues where I just would look at the schedule and would dread going in. I stopped participating in office functions. I would leave for lunch. There were certain patients and procedures that I avoided. Um, a lot of it had to do with me personally up here, being yeah. an introvert and a people pleaser. So as an introvert, in, in dentistry is a very social profession. You have to go from room to room. Yeah. You always have to be on and, and inter it's almost like entertaining that patient and, and, and acting. Right. You can't have a bad day. So for me as an introvert, I found that to be exhausting. So uh, not only is the clinical aspect of dentistry um, exhausting because you're focusing on this little tiny space and you're trying to keep this patient comfortable, but you also have to keep a rapport with that patient. Then you're jumping into the next room for the hygiene exam and keeping that patient entertained and they can't know that you're having a, a stressful <laughs> procedure going on in the other room. Right. So the, all of that social interaction, it really exhausted me. And I just wasn't comfortable on the inside. Mm -hmm. So I, I realized I looked at myself in the mirror and I said, you know, I have to do something. So I called a therapist and I got started going to therapy. And a lot of it was just really getting comfortable with me and who I am and realizing that I have to take care of myself right. before I can take care of others, which meant sometimes saying no to others. And when I did that, it meant saying yes to myself. Mm -hmm. For example, certain patients or cases, I just will say, no, that's not for me or that patient I don't want to work on. Um, or on the flip side, if a patient doesn't agree with my treatment or if they leave a bad review or if yeah. they didn't like me, it's okay. I'm not going to lose sleep over it. I'm comfortable with myself. Right. And I gave that patient the best education and treatment options. And if they want to go somewhere else, that's fine. Yeah. So it was really a mental thing with me. Um, the therapy really helped and um, just really just getting comfortable in my own skin. Wow. And, and how long did it take you within these 20 years to get to that point? You know, I, I suffered with, with anxiety and burnout uh, for way too long. And to tell you the truth, uh, that's, that's a really good question because I never thought of myself as someone that could get anxiety. I was always the laid back, cool guy. I wanted everyone to like me. Gotcha. Um, I didn't want to disappoint anyone. I, I didn't, I wanted to avoid confrontation. So when I remember the first session, when I went to my therapist and they looked at me and she said, Eric, you have anxiety. And I said, what? That's, I can't have anxiety. That's, that's not possible. Yeah. And we really just kind of dug into why I was the way I was and ended up, it took years. Um, and I finally got to the point along with a lot of soul searching and changes at work where now I'm back to the point where I, I love going into work every day That's awesome. and it, I totally beat burnout. So it's for any dentist or dental professional or anyone who's in a job with work related burnout you can beat it. You just have to realize there's an issue, take action, get the help you need and, and stay the course. Wow, that's awesome. I appreciate you sharing that because I think, you know, I'm, I'm a you know, business owner just, just like you and, and it's the day-to-day -day grind and you're like, like you, I'm a people, people's pleaser and I'm also an introvert. So 
really focusing on yourself and how you can be the best self to, you know, give the best you to others is critical. And I think a lot of times, you know, we don't ask for help or we don't look for it. We just keep grinding. And so appreciate you sharing that. And what I love about, you know, this episode as well is that you're an entrepreneur and uh, not just a, a dentist, but you, you look for ways to excel in other areas. And so how has, you know, being an entrepreneur, because I know you, you have a book, web, you have, you know, a website, um, you have a podcast, you have so many things going on. How has being an entrepreneur um, really helped you deal with, you know, office stress? But also, um, I would love to kind of hear about your website, book, and your podcast as well. So during the quarantine, I realized I couldn't just sit there and do nothing. My office was shut down, looked like a, it was all tarped up and looked like a meth lab. And I, I said, uh, you know, like, like that show Breaking Bad, you know, because, oh. <laughs> you know, we're, we're getting all ready for uh, reopening. You know, I said, I can't just worry about the quarantine and, and just focus on the office. I, I want to do something I've never done before. And I was literally getting up at 4 a.m. and I learned how to build a website. Wow. And I was watching YouTube videos and podcasts, listening to podcasts. And I created an online business, which is, it's called dealsfordentist.com. And it's essentially a free marketplace. So dentists go on there for free. It's totally ungated. There's no membership. And vendors will place new customer offers. And then if the dentist likes what the company's offering, they'll click on their button and it funnels them to the, to the vendor's landing page. And so I'm basically connecting the dentist to the vendor. I'm trying to bring the convention or the trade show price directly to the dentist's office. Uh, and I, I had the idea for a while, but I just never had the time to put it together. And so the quarantine was actually a silver lining where I actually had the time to do it. Gotcha. And then from there, I was having so many great conversations with dentists and vendors. And I said, you know what? Every one of these conversations could be a podcast because I just really like to get into everyone's story and how they help dentists and how they got to where they are and really dig into each person's story. So I, I started the podcast because I just met so many amazing people. Right. Then from there, I realized that when people were asking me about you know, my dental history and when I was going on other people's podcasts, I started to talk more about the mental health side of dentistry or just being in, in a high stress profession. And that's where I got the idea for the book, which here's, um, this is going to be coming out in May. So it's called the stress-free dentist. Nice. And that's going to be coming out in May. And it's just about my story. Okay. I'm not an expert. I'm just, just a dentist or, you know, health professional that got through burnout. And I just wanted to share my story. Now that's awesome. And so with the website idea as, as a practice owner, was that what you were seeing? Like it was hard to connect with certain vendors to be able to help your practice excel. So is that where that idea came from to create a website to really, you know, centralize some of the relationships that, you know, other dentists could, you know, leverage to help their practice grow? Yeah. So I, I do a lot of implants and I used to go from rep to rep and ask them, Hey, what's the, you know, the new customer offer? What's the trade show price? Can you give me a package deal, a bundle deal? And I would call around. It was very time consuming. I would get, you know, say 20 implants and get the, a free surgical kit or a free surgical motor. I'd go through my 20 implants and then go on to the next company and the next rep. And I said, you know what, this, you know, is very time consuming. And what if people don't know to do this? Because these new customer offers are out there and they're all over the country with different companies. And it's not just implants. It's with a lot of different types of uh, vendors and with software or consultants, right. um, you name it, it's, it's out there. And I also happened to be in the market for a new credit card. And I was going on these credit card comparison sites mm -hmm. and I was looking for cash back rewards cards because yeah. I don't travel because I have a little kid, so I barely go anywhere. Um, and they, I just liked how they had it all categorized and by, by, category and by um, cash rewards and the offers. So I just put the two things together and that's where I came up with deals for dentists. 
And actually to get back to your, one of your original questions, yes, I find that having these other businesses is such a great distraction yeah. from the stresses of the office, especially with you know, the COVID situation. If all I had was just the dental and all I was thinking about have maybe continued, but because I have other endeavors like the book, the podcast, the website, it's distracts me from the stresses of the office. Yeah. And I like that too, because it's more to your story, right? There's more, you can, there's, there's a larger impact that you can make outside of just what you're doing from a, a dental, you know, owning a, and, and running a dental practice. You can connect with people with, you know, with the podcast and help people that that's where they live. And that's where they're, they're, you know, they're like, that's the target audience for, you know, that kind of that realm of podcasting. And then also with a book, there's, there's a lot of readers. So they, you know, you can impact people's lives because they love to read books. So I love what you're doing because you're helping, you know, you're really helping people um, wherever they're marketing medium or wherever they really spend time. And so that's awesome to hear as well. Um, when it comes to your podcast, what's the name of the podcast? We'd love to get people in tune with that as well. It's a very creative name. It's called the Deals for Dennis podcast. So <laughs> it's, it's, it's off of my website. So it, I, I interview dentists and vendors uh, all across the whole industry, uh, you know, dentists or companies, and I find out their story, how they help dentists, you know, what products they're promoting on my website, and just kind of dig into how they can help dentists, especially the young dentists that are just getting out of school or just graduated. Those are the ones that I'm really trying to help out there. Uh, that's awesome. That's awesome. And commend you for waking up at 4 a.m. just to kind of <laughs> put all this stuff together because uh, as I'm sure you don't have much time <laughs> to do anything else besides practice. Um, when it comes to, you know, your book, is it currently, is it going to be on Amazon or, or where would it be in terms of being able to purchase it? Yeah, when it comes out in May, it's available, available for pre-order right now, but it'll be on Amazon and from my website, uh, which is the stressfreedentist.com. So that's my, my other website, which is, is focused on the book and, and uh, overcoming burnout. So it'll be available on both Amazon and the website. Awesome. And we'll, we'll include all that information in the description of this episode as well um, so that people can connect with you. Um, and then one other question for you will be just growing your practice, because I'm sure that's that's a hot topic, especially from a marketing standpoint. That's all we do is really have those conversations about, you know, how do you grow your practice, especially in today's world with online marketing. But for you and your 20 years of experience, like what, what have you seen to be successful, um, especially when it as it relates to, you know, having a membership plan or, you know, example, like developing your culture or getting more views. What are some of the significant or pivotal moments where you saw that, hey, this is, this is a, a channel that I will continue to improve on to grow this practice? Actually, you nailed it right there. The, the, the reviews, we have a lot of uh, reviews um, on Google. Um, and really, that starts from the, the giving that great patient experience, that great culture, uh, wowing that patient so that they, they leave and they want to tell their friends and family right. about the office and then also leave a review. And the, you know, that really, uh, that along with, you know, feeding money to the Google beast um, yeah. to try to, you know, for SEO, but ultimately people are going to look at your website and read your reviews. And if it looks like you're someone they could connect with, um, we have a video on our, our website, uh, gives a tour of the office. Um, if it looks like that you're someone they can connect with, then they're going to call your office. Um, so the reviews, the, a lot of internal inside reviews have been uh, huge for growing our practice. And then the membership plan is just a great thing to offer, especially when patients don't have insurance, which you know, more than, I think more than half of the population does not have dental insurance oh, yeah. or people lose insurance, they retire or they're a small business and they can't afford insurance for them or their staff. It's such a great option to, to give patients something. They, they get a discount 
uh, off of treatment and they, for an upfront fee, they get their cleanings and exams and x-rays included. So that's been a great marketing tool as well. Oh, that's awesome. And with reviews, uh, do you typically just, you know, like how's that conversation within in your office? Is it, you know, let's say a patient comes in and they, you know, they have a great experience. They, they love the treatment plan with Dr. Block and they're communicating that to the hygienist. Does the hygienist ask the patient to leave a review or is it just more of a natural, you know, the expectation they're going to go home and leave a review because they're so happy about their experience? We use a, a third-party software called BirdEye. Yep. There's, a, there's a bunch of softwares out there, but we use BirdEye and the patient will get an email or a text a certain period of time after their appointment. And they are led to either leave a review on Google, Facebook or direct feedback, which is a great option because if the patient's not happy, they, if you give them the option of direct feedback, right then that is so much better than them leaving a negative review right. so we just from using that 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 software our, our reviews just skyrocketed yeah that's awesome and, and so very familiar familiar with uh, my bird eye and they have a, a sister company called uh, my social practice and mm -hmm. it's under the same brand but they just offer the review software at a much cheaper rate so almost just like what your website deals for dentists, like this would be a kind of a, a you know, alternate option for, you know, dentists for affordable review softwares. And it does exactly what you're just talking about. It, it really helps with, you know, getting reviews. We've seen with our clients, um, probably I would say somewhere in like a 30 to 40% uh, increase in review acquisition on Google and across Google and Facebook specifically, uh, because it's so critical and efficient with the text messaging aspect that people can leave a review within like 20 seconds versus like the old traditional method of asking and then telling them, you know, when you go home, you know, search our name, click on, you know, the review uh, total there and then leave a review and then click post. Or you may have to sign into your Google My Business or a Google Gmail account. So telling them all these different directions, like they just get overwhelmed. It's like, I'm not gonna leave a review, even if they had a great experience. So to your point, my, uh, my bird eye and uh, my social practice are, are great to kind of leverage uh, getting reviews, especially from happy patients. Um, when, it, when it comes to, uh, you know, overall membership plans, have you guys tried Google ads and Facebook ads um, to really help hone in on that target, you know, offer, especially for those that don't have, you know, a dental plan or dental insurance plan? Yeah, and we were also thinking about just going around to the local businesses and and we have a brochure and just going from, you know, door to door and just saying, Hey, we're, you know, the dental office down the street and we have a membership plan. And if you don't have dental insurance, or if your staff doesn't have dental insurance or your family or friends, um, here's our plan. And that's something we haven't really done as much as I'd like, just because uh, we haven't had the time, but uh, that's something I want to strive to do is really reach out to the local businesses. Um, and we have put some money into SEO on Google. So it, it does, it does show up if a patient is um, searching for discount or a membership plan, you can't really, you can't call it insurance. Right. Uh, so you, we call it an in-house savings plan. Right. Right. No, that's awesome. And, and just, you know, quick, quick note on that. So what we've seen to work very well from a membership plan standpoint, is really having the call to actions for that membership plan on the website for user engagement. So it, it connects with them as they land on the website from Google, for example. But then Google ads and Facebook ads have been monumental for a lot of our clients promoting that membership plan because there's some retargeting happening on the back end. So like if they land on the website from Google and then they don't take action for whatever reason and then they go to you know Facebook, the Facebook ads will show up with that membership plan because we're targeting their your IP address and pixels to be able to uh, promote that pain point uh, to connect with, you know, they, they're not having insurance, but they need dental care or oral care. So it's been amazing. So we've seen like 10 to 15 new patients a month for a lot of our clients on average uh, running Facebook ads and Google ads uh, for those membership plans. So, and then I, I would even say with Facebook ads, they're so inexpensive um, because a lot of dentists are not leveraging Facebook. Um, it's, it's not a saturated market right now. And I think there's so like, 
most dentists right now on Google and Google Ads, but Facebook Facebook is really a market where you can tap into. Yes, it's more social based, but if you if you use it as branding and retargeting, you can really connect with your audience and really promote to a specific type of person. So like you can get very because people give all their information to Facebook. They give their you know their height, their weight, their their location, their interests, their behaviors, all that all that all that all that jazz. So. Facebook's been monumental for a lot of the lead gen that we've done with a lot of these membership plans. Um, do, you, do you do that through boosting on Facebook or is that, is that a different thing? So, so we use boosting more so for like the posts. Like, so like, let's say we create a social media post on Facebook, we will boost it to a specific audience. But with Facebook ads, that's, that is still in Facebook, but it's like, it's a different um, campaign and ad structure and a, and a platform where you can really get granular the challenge with Boost, you know, when you compare Boost versus a campaign, an actual Facebook ads campaign is boosting, you can only, you know, target a certain amount of, you know, criteria or, or information about that user. When you get to Facebook ads, you can get very granular with a lot of their interests that they have on their profiles, um, the behaviors, um, income levels, um, you know, location, radius target, like you can get so granular with your targeting that you can pinpoint a specific type of person and you, you're just going to get leads, you know, galore out of these type of campaign ads. So uh, boosting is great, but it, it, it doesn't generate the, the leads that you would want from a, you know, from a membership plan. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so I, I really appreciate you sharing all that wealth of knowledge, especially, you know, you've been, you know, been around for many years practicing and, and getting through you know, burnout and, and using therapy as a part of, you know, really finding yourself again and still being able to, you know, be a solution and a, uh, a resource for a lot of your patients who, who need that oral care. So, and so thank you for that. But then also just being an entrepreneur, like that is amazing because being an entrepreneur and, you know, obviously you're an entrepreneur because you run a practice, but being an entrepreneur and creating other value in different ways, that is time consuming and very hard. <laughs> so, so commend you on, on doing that as well and providing so much value to the dental, dental space. Um, I guess the last question for you would be if, if there's any dentists that are li listening to this podcast, if there's one bit of advice you could give them, or let's say, you know, one thing like you pinpoint, this is one thing that I've learned that really helped me. Um, it, it doesn't have to be stress or burnout related, or it could be anything, whatever, whatever you feel. We would love just to kind of hear that advice that you would give them. Yeah, a few things. So number one, don't give into the false belief that dentistry is just a stressful profession and there's nothing you can do about it. You don't have to practice uh, under, you know, being burned out or, or stressed out and anxious. You can, you can beat it. You just have to realize that you're having an issue and, and get the help you need and you can get back and you can beat, you can beat burnout. Um, a few, few, and, and seeking help doesn't have to be with, with a therapist. That was for me, but it could be in the form of finding a mentor or a consultant, a coach. And I feel that peer engagement is such a powerful tool. Reaching out to your peers, just having a phone call with a local or just a friend who's, who's going through the same thing you're going through it, a dentist to dentist peer engagement because you've walked in each other's shoes and you just, you just get each other is, is such a stress relief. Um, I also found that get yourself comfortable in the office and if, you know, physically, mentally, um, if return on fun versus return on investment. So for example, a, a piece of equipment that may not be necessarily there on the return on investment, but there's the return on fun, meaning you enjoy using it and it makes your your day-to-day -day practice more enjoyable. For example, we we invested in an interoral scanner. Um, I have a cone beam CT scan, um, a 3D printer. I invested a lot of money into these things, but it makes me enjoy practicing so much more. And I, I look forward to doing crowns because I have a scanner instead of just the traditional impressions. So things like that just just make yourself comfortable, get the help you need, reach out to your peers and try to enjoy work. And if you're not, then reach out for help. Awesome. Awesome. And, you know, again, thank you for you know, just really 
uh, you know, all that you do. And so excited about this episode to get it out there uh, to the audience. And again, this is uh, Dr. Block. Uh, he is a, an amazing dentist and an entrepreneur. Uh, we'll include his website, uh, Deals for Dentists, in the, the bio of this, of this episode. And then also check out his book in May. And then podcast, we'll link that as well in this episode. So thanks again, Dr. Block. We appreciate all that you do. And uh, we're, we're excited about uh, everyone listening to this episode. Oh, my pleasure. Thanks for having me. Awesome.